Hello? Hi, this is Mark Sperling. Yeah. And this is the guy that raised the price of the line saying and medication five thousand percent. No, it's the boogeyman. What do you want? Yeah, yeah, what do you want? Go, go ahead, go ahead. Say your mind, speak your mind. Well, you know, like, uh, with that price increase, I was just kind of wondering what you think is going to happen with the change in the presidential, you know, thing that's going on with the new uh, people coming into office, like how that's going to affect, you know, what's going on with your company. Not sure they, any, it doesn't matter who came into office, it's my product, I can sell for whatever I want. Look at it, you know, I'm showing you a drug called Flonase, I take it every day. The company that makes yeah. it can sell it for a trillion dollars if it wanted. No one would buy it, but you know, setting the how up, long does it, setting the price how of long a good is up to the manufacturer. I, how long will it be to the patent runs out on this? There's no patent on it. There's no patent on it. There's no patent. Hmm? There's no patent on on that drug. So any other company could go manufacture like a generic. Yeah. Do you think companies look at price, or do they look at revenue before they decide to make a drug? True, true. Ah, yeah, the crazy, the crazy business thing. Oh, yeah. I forgot about, I forgot about that. Sales and revenue and profits. Oh. Appreciate that. I got one last question for you since I finally got through. It took forever to get a hold of you. What do you think about, like, uh, since you're so smart drugs, what is your opinion on uh, methyltryptamine? I don't have an opinion on it. Uh, I wish you was, like, out there. I'll say that much. <laughs> I don't know if you studied it all, but I just want to throw that out there since somebody scrolled through and asked about you and know, psychedelics. So. Okay, is it an illicit, illicit drug to get high? Um, I make life saving uh, medicine. Do you know how insulting that is? You know, like, I, 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 I'm happy, happy to talk about that, but you know, when you talk about tripping to somebody who spent 15 years making life-saving medicine, it's pretty, it's pretty well, insulting. And, and that's the thing. I, I wouldn't say it's, it's just for a high. Why do you, why do you want to talk about? You, you don't want to talk about spinal muscular atrophy. You want to talk about no, Duchenne I mean, muscular dystrophy. You want to talk about? You want to talk about psychedelics? Okay, when I think about medicine, I think about saving dying kids' lives. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, and that's the thing, you know. Like, I don't think about I don't think about psychedelics. Yeah, I get it. I just from, from a scientific standpoint. Yeah, from a scientific standpoint, I use my brain power to save dying kids' lives, not to think about getting high. Well, and and because it, it would be a gigantic waste of talent on my part to worry about getting high when I can worry about dying kids. You can't save kids' lives with cannabinoids. <laughs> you can't save their lives, but you can make their quality a lot better. It's a very important point, but I worry about yeah. saving lives. You're insulting me greatly. You don't seem to understand that you're insulting me greatly. I'm not trying to. I'm just saying that there's not a lot of research done on certain chemicals. Because maybe it's because real. Si maybe it's because real scientists are doing real research on real hard problems. And you and your BMT can go shout up your... But any chemical combination out there can have potential... You're not a scientist. You should shut up. <laughs> I, I, you sound I, like a, you sound like an idiot right now. You understand? Any potential chemical combination... Shut up. I don't, I don't tell a plumber how to plumb, dude. I don't know the first thing... I don't know the first thing about how a toilet works. So you come to me... Did you get on... Go ahead. You come to me and you want to talk about medicine? You don't know the first thing about medicine? If you get on Reddit and stuff, you've seen where there have been soldiers that have come back with PTSD. Dude, you know that. you're you're really going there. Well, they use MDMA to help with their PTSD. There's there's the difference between like. You know, I'm sorry, you you really want to talk about pharmaceuticals with me? I I'm just posing a question. You, you want to talk about pharmaceuticals with me, and the first thing you should talk about is MDMA, DMT. You're 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 sort of like a a, a 
a fragmental thinker. You, you, you think in little fragments and you assume your tiny fragment is relevant to cosmically important things like medicine. <laughs> but I appreciate getting your opinion. Yeah. Yeah, this is a really good use of my time. All right, buddy. We'll see you. Are your parents still alive? Yeah. Do you support them? No. Are they well to do? No. <laughs> You know, it's one of these things where, um, That's weird. my mom won't let me support, my mom still works as a janitor. She won't let me support her. I keep begging her to let me, um, buy her my house or whatever. And they're just like, no, 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 no. And That's so interesting. she's going to wait till you get married, have kids, she gets a little older and then she's going to move in with you. And she's like, you need the help. Yeah, probably. Right. Yeah, she hates. She, she thinks money is like the least relevant thing on the planet, and she's very proud as well. She would never quit her job because she probably could just live off of your money. I told her a million times to quit, and she, I made a bet with her, which I'm sure she will honor. I said that if I get married, that she has to quit, and she said we had a deal, but I could see that not coming to fruition. Um, She's a sweet old lady, you know, she's like a babushka. She's not that old, but she's, she's like 20, 30 years older than she looks. Or she looks 23 years older than she is. She wears like this handkerchief and she like rides oh like God. a soup. Like, it's, it's, it's amazing. Like she refuses to learn English. Like it's incredible. Like she, she, she has like a thick Albanian accent. She just wants to learn English. Like she's just like, nah, no thanks. Like she didn't know how to read. I can speak Albanian a little bit. She can speak English a little bit. Um, and she always like, she's always like, are you eating? Are you eating? Can I make you food? Can I do your laundry? And I'm like, mom, it's killing me. But she's a nice woman. She's a little neurotic. Um, my dad wants me to support the family more, um, but mom gets in the way quite a bit. Um, I support my brother and my sister a little bit. Not too much. Um, but our family doesn't, you know, we never cared about money too much. I mean, I probably cared about it way more than everyone else, but my family, money doesn't make you a good person. It shouldn't make you a good person in any family. Um, they're proud of me and my accomplishments, but if I did something bad, they wouldn't be proud of me. Um, and if I, you know, if I did something that they felt was morally wrong, I'd be shunned. Um, in my Albanian community, people look up to me for making it in America. Um, and I think they understand the sort of drug pricing thing. If you look at the drug inventions I've come up with, for instance, they're, um, I think they more than outweigh the sort of reality of high drug prices in this country that I'm not, I didn't start and I'm not going to finish. I'm just a part of, um, but I am making drugs for rare diseases. They were proud of that before this, you know, I, I was here before the drug price increase. And I was doing good things, I think. Um, but this got a lot of attention, and it is what it is. And I'm dealing with it the way I'm dealing with it, which is a little bit of denial, a little bit of frustration, not a lot of poise or grace. But, um, you know, I'm 33 years old, and um, life's happened a little too fast for me sometimes to deal with. And this is the way I'm dealing with it, and it's a little bit immature, and it's a little bit silly, but... Um, it's the best way for me to process it. And, you know, uh, I think it's working to a small extent. You know, I've got some people that do think I'm, I'm a victim of this sort of some kind of attack and an unwillingness to be reasonable and try to hear my side of the story. And the people that have tried to hear my side of the story, I think has tried to be, have tried to sort of couch it as a little bit more even handed. I just did this thing with this sports podcast where um, these guys are like out to kill me. And it went on there and they, at the end of it, they were like, we're big fans of yours now. We, we kind of get it. Um, and I was lucky that they were willing to listen. All right, so I'm gonna take this nasal spray. Do it. Oxytocin. So women usually, women express oxytocin receptors in places that I don't have. And uh, it prevents postpartum bleeding and postpartum hemorrhage, which is one of the most common causes of uh, Death and childbirth. Bleeding, yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, 
Okay. So now the oxytocin uh, receptors in the brain control different uh, emotions. So are you, are you leaking breast milk now? Some say it feels a little like ecstasy. You're no. not fooling anyone. No, oxytocin is no, um, unfortunately, has no uh, physiological impact to healthy volunteers. Some people think it increases trust and different, uh, different slight psychosocial constructs. Um, but yeah, pair, who said pair bonding? Pair bonding is, uh, okay, so there's these prairie voles. Let's see if Jiffy has a... Prairie voles. Prairie voles. Is Jiffy, nice. how do we do Jiffy? Is it, okay, this is a prairie vole. <laughs> these guys are little rats, basically, but they form male-female bonding. And they actually will cuddle. <laughs> they will uh, choose a partner, male will choose a female partner, and they'll stay with them forever till they die. Oh, you look at the picture. It's so cute. And they will not um, copulate with the non, with the, anyone that's not their pair. Literally, their pair bond. Based prairie moles. I need to find my pair bond. Exactly, and um, they determined that the reason prairie voles have this and non non prairie voles don't have this is the oxytocin receptors in their brain and. Dogs have oxytocin. When a dog sees you, it, its brain makes oxytocin. All this crazy stuff. But just taking the um, the hormone itself doesn't seem to do the trick, unfortunately. The effects are subtle at best, if, if they exist at all. Uh, we were hoping to develop it as a treatment for autism, uh, because people with autism have a tough time bonding with others and sort of seeing and feeling their emotions that they maybe have a hard time understanding. So, Pretty cool. Is it just like in, has anyone actually pursued it or is that just like an idea right now? Yeah, no, it's been a, it's been pursued. Uh, my company's pursued it. Um, a lot of psychiatrists still think it's a viable path forward. I unfortunately have given up on it. Let's see, oxytocin autism. I haven't seen it in a while. Body dysmorphic disorder in patients with ASD. That was another possibility is body dysmorphic and a handful of other strange illnesses all right so i was just wondering because i think that i don't get any girls because i think they're intimidated <laughs> by my intelligence because i like talking about things like thermodynamics and application of nuclear power in metropolitan areas and i just think i'm too intimidating for all these women and okay, maybe that's my problem you. Do you get the same problem, Martin, being an intellectual such as myself with an IQ of 196? Roman, how old are you? 18, sir. All right, look. When I was 15, I had some of the same issues. I wasn't nearly as good looking as you are, which makes Thank you, sir. the case much easier. Um, women don't want to talk about thermodynamics. They don't want to talk about... Nuclear power Nuclear application power, for metropolitan we areas. About any of that, urban planning. Women want to talk about, most women, and it's not because they're not intelligent. There's way vastly more intelligent women out there than I am. It's because oh. in a relationship, in a relationship, you don't want to burden your relationship partner with that kind of dense material. You want to talk about frivolous things with, with women. Not and, and this applies with, with women talking to men. It's the same, uh, and, and, and men talking to women. It's, it's symmetrical. You don't want to have a relationship where you say, well, let's talk about the catastrophe in East Timor and how the local government reacted to it. That sounds painful. That sounds difficult. You, you spend time with your partner. You want to talk about, you know, just dial it down a notch, talk about fun and frivolous things. And if your partner wants to spend their time uh, talk and that's the vast majority of the population doesn't want to doesn't want to talk about um, these these difficult to understand things you might get some luck somewhere finding someone who does but you know I, I would say just try to find common ground that's basically my message that's great advice that is I'm sorry Martin but I was just kidding I'm just, I was just pretending to be a beta but thanks for your time you know sure and hi tabby hello I'm starting to think your initial statements are actually true yeah, I know, right? How are you, man? <laughs> Actually, you were just on here it's the other day saying how high, nervous it's not due you to your were. To talk to IQ. <laughs> yeah, I say that all the time, guys. It's a joke. 
He was on here the other night asking for advice about how to approach a girl because he was Whatever she says. Whatever she says. I'm serious. Zoom tried giving him advice. It was really sad. Can I chill out here or do I have to do I have to dip? I think we're gonna make you dip just because uh of, uh, oh, I love Roman. Because I'm not, I'm not bringing the the views anymore, right? No, you just tried to pull a fast one on me. Maybe, maybe if I let the girls out. Oh, oh, open bobs, baby. I like your Russian body, Roman. <laughs> it's very, it's very slim and slender, like an otter. It's good for swimming. <laughs> Thanks for all these follow guys. I've never gotten so many follows. <laughs> this one time. <laughs> oh my god. What a hoot. By the way, great advice. I was like impressed. Hey, it's gonna be interesting to see uh Yeah, so the idea is that the NMDA receptor is it's site of action, right? And it's there's a glycine site and there's a glutamate site. And these two sites act think of them like ears on the face or something. And when glutamate enters the glutamate receptor and glycine enters the glycine, glycine receptor, the channel opens and ketamine fits in the channel. And it seems to get stuck in the channel. It's something that people haven't been able to understand because you can make a channel inhibitor that's um, more potent than ketamine, which is not very potent for the channel itself. But it doesn't kind of get lodged precisely in there and it seems to have this resident half-life in the receptor now it's not uncommon for drugs to have short half-lives that have long-term effects now ketamine doesn't have a long-term effect if you look at morrow's papers dr james morrow's here at, in, in new york city at mount sinai he shows that ketamine's effects wear off after a few days so um i would argue they'd wear off like after an hour or so. well the dissociative effects wear off after an hour the antidepressant effects in Dr. Morrow's double-blind paper clearly show they, and every other paper's recapitulated the same data. It's about three days, three to seven days. Um, so after three to seven days, the you get back to your depression, and um, it is what it is. Now, there are some patients that have a better response. There's some patients that have a worse response. But if you give ketamine every seven days, which is what I'm sort of advocating for the right the right patient, not every patient. Very, very select patients. Johnson & Johnson is advocating to give it to everyone. I, I'm very, 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 very opposed to that. So you're directly competing with Johnson & Johnson? They, they've got some sort of analog that they're, they're, they're pushing through? It's, they have um, S-ketamine, the S-isomer. We have the racemic mixture. Wow, I didn't know that you were competing with Johnson & Johnson about that. Yep, it's a lot of fun. Changes my whole perspective of it. I, I've been stigmatized by that drug. Um, yeah, I used this a lot when I was younger. In the clubs and on the streets yep. and stuff. It's a medicine. Kind of a nasty drug. It is. It suspends your motor, motor skills. Well, remember, this... It's like a date rape drug. It is. No, that's right. The antidepressant doses here are about um, a quarter or a half of what you would take to abuse it. And you would take it, uh, again, only once in a... Once a week, once every two weeks, that kind of thing. Um, it's really, it's really a miraculous treatment. It's just um, the, there's some bladder toxicity that I'm. I mean, I wake up in a cold sweat about this stuff. It's this drug seems to, in one out of like a thousand people, it seems to really wreck the bladder, which I'm not thrilled with. And then um, some folks even think there's a cancer risk, which I'm not. I'm less less concerned with but still freaks me out a little bit so it's a weird little drug it's one of the strangest drugs ever made and it's amazing that 40 years okay. as long as you can as long as you can prevent uh people from taking like oversized doses or whatever i guess you'll be okay but i would strongly suggest like uh some sort of protective package or something. yep oh yes what i was thinking is actually wrecking their cars and each other and, you know, oh yeah I was I, strong, dangerous drug. It is. It is very dangerous. It's a street drug. I, I I've been considering trying to make a fingerprint, a uh, biometric device that dispenses the drug, so that it can't be. Um, someone someone has to swipe their fingerprint on the inhaler, and vouch for 
the spray, if that makes sense. And um, fingerprints were yeah, fingerprints recorded. It's, you know, at least some doctor and some patient are both vouching that the use of ketamine is is legitimate, so it's not abused. Um, it dissociative for so what the way Johnson and Johnson and probably we are getting around it is we only want it distributed in the physician's office. So the physician said, because anesthesia, you typically, if you ever had a surgery, I've had a few minor surgeries myself, you, you, you wait till the patient's okay to go home. <laughs> you know, you don't just send them on his way. So I think ketamine is going to be something, it, yeah, exactly, it's, it's better for the physician's office. So it's, it's a cool little drug. Anyway, the point I'm making about ketamine, it's only one of, say, 10 drugs I've, I've developed or looked at developing or am developing. Um, it's expensive. And I'd rather raise the money from Daraprim than from Wall Street. Um, you know, Wall Street's Wall Street's is kind of weird and difficult to work with, as as people say it is. It's well, they don't necessarily like uh, uh, rare diseases either. 